So, um, hi, Antonio. Um, it's really nice to, to have you on the, the first, uh, the inaugural episode of um, FinTech Making Sense of Data. How are you doing? I'm doing well. And uh, thank you for having me in the podcast. I'm very, very happy to stay here. Yeah, fantastic. So Antonio um, has a, a background of, of working in the fintech and financial space, creating startups and, and working in data, currently the, the head of data at Capital, um, and has very kindly agreed to be part of the, the interview series. So um, we'll, we'll dive straight into things, really. So um, what was your, your first venture into the, the fintech space, working with data, and, and, and what was your goal? Okay, well, uh, it's a Quite a time was a uh, 15 years ago. That was my first uh, time in the fintech space. Back then, we don't have very clear that, term that uh, terminology uh, called fintech, right? But uh, was a company uh, it, that we developed software for financial market. I'm original from Brazil. That company was in Brazil, and we are talking about 2003, 2004. Uh, the Brazilian financial market became very interesting space, and I had finished my college with my colleagues. Uh, I have background in economic and computer science, and we decided to open a company in that space. So it was very interesting because back then, uh, we have some goals and some ideas, uh, and data started to become a very uh, interesting field for me and a patient as well, because we think, okay, Brazilian financial market start to become hot. It's nice, but people need information. How people will invest without good information, right? And uh, back then, if you look at market, we have mainly uh, big companies like Bloomberg that provide information for them, but it's quite expensive, right? And uh, we thought, okay, we have a huge market to explore given or provide information for individuals, small investors, even small asset uh, uh, management companies that could not afford uh, products uh, very expensively. That was uh, the idea. Develop one product in fintech space, specifically in financial market that helps people take more accurate decisions. When I say people, I wanna say people that could not afford uh, that very expensive tools. Yeah. And that moment, we have a bunch of challenges because, you know, uh, we start to understand that data plays important role to understand the client, but we don't have the modern tech stack, right? We don't have a lot of uh, things that currently we have that start to pop up in 2020, sorry, 2010. So, uh, we have a bunch of challenges, interesting challenges uh, in how to create the better data infrastructure to provide that information uh, to the users. Yeah, ab absolutely. A very, um, you know, interesting goal to, to set out to, uh, you know, help people in, in that space that were previously sort of ignored by, you know, big, uh, big fin serves. So how was it that you were working with data to um, make certain financial services and, and products more accessible to, to people who previously didn't have access? How did data play a role in that? Well, in that case, data play very, very important role because uh, data for people that don't have access to the market uh, or information, it's important to help them, to help us create a more um, inclusiveness or give more access to financial market or to uh, fintech space, right? Uh, it's based on data and of course, uh, technology that you can bring light for that market, understand your client, understand their needs, and start to democratize the access to bank systems or financial market, stock market as all. Well. And uh, why data is so important for that? Because you need to, develop a, high pro a, a right product, you need to think how that information will help that people. And you should keep in mind as well that usually that audience don't have high financial literacy. So you need to understand the behavior. You need to understand they need. Uh, data is essential for do that. You can create the high peak, the right picture from, from your users, understand better 
the pain point and tackle it directly and say, oh, that's the point, that's uh, the user case, that's the way that I should uh, help um, the audience and help the financial inclusion because, you know, it means give access for people. Yeah, absolutely. It seems like making everything more personalized um, in the end makes things a lot easier for not only the, um, you know, the fintech business itself, but uh, customers and, and users. Absolutely. So when you set out to, um, you know, make fintech and financial services more accessible to people, that's, um, you know, an excellent motivation to, to be working with data and, and doing the work. But what are some of the challenges along the way for making it, you know, not only improving people's lives, but, um, you know, generating business uh, and making sure that the, the business thrives and you can continue to, uh, to spur on growth? Well, especially if you look for this, this space that I'm, uh, I'm working for so long, we have a bunch of challenges, right? Uh, the challenge number one, it's talent. I mean, people that you need uh, to find to really help you build things. Uh, I usually say for people, oh, I have a bunch of ideas, but if I don't have the right team, uh, I can't develop those ideas because, you know, I need uh, people and uh, find that people uh, and engage that people in your idea. It's kind of art. The first challenge is, okay, what is the right people? Uh, uh, how you can engage them? Uh, how we can contact with them and show the, show my, uh, show the ideas uh, to that people in order to uh, bring them to the to the process. Another thing that's important to keep in mind is data uh, literacy. That's a big challenge because we are going in one direction each day that you listen to people and companies say, oh, I'm a data driven person. I'm take decisions based on data, right? Phenomenal. It's nice. It's pretty good. But it's not the reality that everybody has the same level of skills in data. So uh, create that environment that you can help uh, people inside of your organizations improve the data literacy. It's essential because otherwise you create one, one situation uh, very, very um, unfair, right? Because we try to create or take decisions based on data but you don't have people that can really use that uh, data to take the decisions. So uh, that's the big challenge that I'm seeing, right? And, uh, and the idea as well, that two big challenges inside of the, uh, the company, do the company space. And when you look a little broadly uh, for the market as all, well, we have a very crowded space in uh, FinTech, right? Uh, what happened? We have different startups jump in. You have the traditional companies. We have now the big techs uh, jumping that marketing and uh, highly competitive. How you create your unfair advantage in that case? It's based on data. Again, uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm very, very uh, uh, comfortable when you say that why it's based on data because the technology per se it's each day more affordable, right? Uh, the cost of them is not so high like 10 years ago. In the future, it will be less and less and less. So if the technology is more affordable, it's easy to create. If the time of production was not so long as was in the past, what is your differentiation, right? How you create that? You create if you have a absolutely good user experience and design and how you can create that two piece with data, uh, how you can create a good user experience, just if you understand your client and for understand your client, you need that information. Absolutely, absolutely. I, I appreciate the way you broke that down for us. Um, what are some of the ways that you're using data right now to Im improve um, not only your business, but improve the lives of the, the customers that you have uh, now at Capital? Yes, yes. At Capital, uh, it's a savings app. Uh, and we believe that savings uh, is one function of uh, three variables, basically, right? Uh, how you spend, how much money you make, and your leverage of lowers, or how much money you take from third parts. You have that three parts. If 
we understand your behavior in each one of them, I can do what? Improve your uh, level of savings. What we are doing at Capital is uh, use machine learning slash AI and models uh, to understand in deep the user behavior to say, okay, what is really uh, the behavior of Antonio when he's spending? And uh, of course, we use it and we cross uh, with data from Antonio to understand which uh, uh, is of the life Antonio is living, he's living. So when you have that part of the piece, you also say, okay, how much money Antonio is making, right? Because that's the energy for, uh, for you. We can understand it, and you can understand as well uh, what uh, is the Antonio behavior. I mean, how much money Antonio used for the third parts, how many loans Antonio has. When we have all that information, we have a 36800 view from our clients. And at that point, I can create a highly personalized uh, input for you. And you can, for example, find money uh, in your uh, in your bank account that you don't know that you uh, use. You can forecast a lot of things. You can say, hey, uh, usually you spend uh, $1,000 per week. Why you have $2,000 park in your account each week? Let's move that thousand extra for a CD, for a savings account, or moving for you know, one goal that you have. Uh, and you can uh, help you achieve your goal fast. And that was the things that we uh, uh, started to develop inside of capital to help uh, people uh, improve their financial lives. Fantastic. It's always good to hear, uh, you know, the, the difference that data is making in, in whatever industry, but particularly in, in uh, fintech and, and the financial services. So what are some of the ways that, um, given how sort of quick fintechs are changing and, and growing and popping up all of the time. What are some of the, the ways that you're able to use data um, to stay innovative um, and competitive in the, in the fintech space? Yeah, yeah. Uh, data in that case, it's, uh, it's essential because uh, one risk of different tech companies, and not just fintechs, but uh, tax in general, we start up better to say, we stop to innovate. Right, uh, and the innovation is uh, the key things for your uh, achieve your goals in the company uh, growing, and of course you achieve uh, product market fit and make your investors happy as well, <laughs> not just your clients. But important to make the investors uh, very happy. So the data help us to analyze and help us to build new products to understand new ways to solve one problem, or even uh, understand what, what should be the next product. So uh, use data as a strategic component, right? Uh, a strategic thinking, say, okay, uh, let me see how I can use that information that I have in my database in order to achieve the goals of the company, achieve the goals of the client, understand uh, how you can do different, right? How I can use that giant asset that all companies have to really produce money to the innovation. So it's, a, it's imagined for me data in that case, that's a kind of uh, material that you drink that gives you the insights for the innovation, right? That helps you to uh, try to see uh, forward, see uh, next steps uh, for your product, for your client. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's, it's becoming pretty apparent to um, most, if not all businesses now, how important data is going to be to, to stay ahead of the game. And I think FinTech more than um, more than most. Um, so Antonio, you have a, a quite um, a long history in, in the FinTech space. And one question I wanted to ask you from the, you know, various startups you were a part of um, founding in back in Brazil and, and the work that you've done in the US, if you had to start again in the FinTech space, knowing everything that you you know now, what are some of the lessons that you've learned working with data that you you might have wished that you knew right at the beginning? 
used data since the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> Answer. And, and, and why it, it, uh, it's it's a funny because uh, understand that uh, that data it it should be uh, in the design in the concept of the product because sometimes people start to think oh let me create a product or, or I will open a startup and have an idea right. and they start to build the product and they start to productionize the product and at some point that person will say okay I need to understand my clients okay but I have that data. Oh my gosh, no, I don't have. I did not track that data. Okay, we have a lot of problems because you did not track that data or you store that data in one manager in one way that was highly mutable and you cannot uh, see the whole picture. And uh, I mean, you don't think about data since the conception. Uh, I, I did it in some startups that I worked, that I founded. And uh, Today is the mistake that I don't do anymore. Uh, use data since the beginning of the concept of the project. Whole project should have a data chapter, right? Uh, and really have to really understand how that asset or how that uh, piece of uh, how it can really make the difference uh, in the in the product, in the successful of the product. Another thing that really for me it's important uh, that it's a, also essential. It's uh, what I said, uh, another point was data literacy. Create one culture inside of the company that data literacy, it's one important pillar because doesn't matter if you uh, as well create, start to create your product based on data, think that the best data structure, think that uh, the best way that you can analyze the data, retrieve that data, and et cetera, if you don't have people that understand in all levels, not just technical levels, but uh, for the business side, for the marketing side, for the design side, right? Uh, data literacy is essential with data democratization because without that two piece, we cannot take, or the company won't take the better decisions. And uh, we be, will be very hard for you to say, hey, I'm really a uh, data centric company or data driven company, or even some people say, hey, a company that uh, is more value uh, chain company, even if you say that value chain company and the underline is data. <laughs> so uh, data literacy, data, uh, democratization uh, and for me it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's two very very important topics that if I uh, come back in the time uh, I would I really 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 take much more attention since the beginning in that two points. Yeah, absolutely. I think there's you know, two really good points there about knowing the role data is going to play in the product that you're creating so you can, you know, maximize the uh, the return on investment for, for working with data because it's not always a, a cheap process, is it? And and also um, the importance of, of data culture, um, things like data literacy, democratization, uh, probably sometimes gets um, understated for how important it actually is and how difficult that the people side and the culture side of data really is to implement and uh, you know change the heart of minds of of people in the business so hopefully um someone listens to this who's starting their journey um and uh, can get some benefit from what you're saying and doesn't make the same mistakes that uh, a lot of other people have <laughs> absolutely absolutely yeah. absolutely if the for young entrepreneurs by young entrepreneurs i, I mean people that start that journey right now uh, that would be my three piece of advice. Uh, think about the data that you need uh, in your product to understand your client and how you uh, will use that data, data literacy and data democratization. So that's the must have things in the, in the mind of the, any, uh, any uh, new entrepreneur or even more seasoned entrepreneur that, you know, uh, start to create new companies and etc. Uh, that three things is a, is a crucial. Absolutely. And if there are any um, young entrepreneurs uh, listening to this 
reach out to Antonio because he's he's been there and, and done that and he can give you a, a heads up of what to, what to do and what not to do in data. Um, Antonio, thank you very much for joining me. Um, it's been a, a pleasure to speak with you again and, and have you on the FinTech series. Um, no doubts that we'll uh, speak again very soon. Thank you so much. It was my pleasure.